The two main questions I'm gonna answer today are one, are they good for self-studiers? And two, are they good for upper beginners who are ready to start moving into intermediate material? you, you. it's Ataya, and if you're new here, I have been learning Korean for a few years now. I have used so many different textbooks, if you can't tell, from my bookcase behind me. Today, I'll be giving you a review of Iwa Hangugo. The textbooks, the study guides, the workbooks. So a total of six books. <laughs> yeah, I'll break them down for you. Don't worry. Let's not uh, delay any further and go ahead and jump into the video. Go, go. Now it's background information. This textbook is the third level of a series of like six different levels of textbooks. So Iwa Women's University has made textbooks for their Korean language school there on like their university campus. So level one is for absolute beginners who know no Korean. Level two is for like mid beginners through like upper beginners slash people that are getting ready to go into intermediate, uh, the intermediate level. So level three is the first intermediate textbook. They never call it intermediate, but that's, that's what it is. So it's like that low intermediate to mid intermediate. Basically, it's like intermediate one. This is what that textbook is. Now, since this is the third book in the series, it's expected that the student has already studied Iwa level one and Iwa level two, but you do not actually need to have studied with those beforehand to use this textbook. The only problem that I encountered from like switching textbook series um, was the vocab. The expectation of what vocab you're supposed to know is different. So there were a lot of like level one and level two words that I was defining when I first started using these books, but honestly, that problem didn't last very long. I would say maybe the first two or three chapters I found myself uh, defining more words than usual, but once I learned them, it was fine. This textbook has 15 chapters with a total of 60, yes, 60 grammar structures. So that's four grammar structures per chapter. And it teaches you over 1000 vocabulary words or rather than teaches you, it expects you to learn over a thousand vocabulary words. And those are just the words that are in the vocab list. There are still more words that like you might not know and things like that. Then an explanation in Korean that's really, really, really concise, which we'll get into this in a second. And then some example sentences and a practice exercise that I feel is rather intuitive. And I wanna mention that the practice exercises here in the textbook are intuitive, like you know what's going on, what they want you to do. Um, because I actually study with the Seoul National Books as well, and their textbook exercises are so confusing. Like if I didn't have a Song Sing Nim that I was working through the textbook with, I would be really confused and I wouldn't be able to work through them myself because it's just, there's like no instructions at all. But these do a really good job of telling you what they want you to do and then giving you examples so that you can easily do the practice exercises without a teacher guiding you through them. Now, once you've gotten through the grammar exercises, there's a short listening section that uses like those grammar structures, that vocab. Then there's a speaking section, which unfortunately I could not really do the speaking section because again, I was doing this as a self-studier and I didn't know anyone else who was using these textbooks at the time. The last part of the speaking exercise is actually just like, this is honestly one of my favorite parts of this textbook, is a set of like how to say one idea in several different ways using different grammar structures and different vocabulary. But I thought that was really, really cool and I really liked it, especially when you're trying to like figure out, okay, what grammar basically means the same thing? Is it interchangeable? Does it have the same feeling? Which with Korean, each structure has like a different connotation, a different little nuance to it, which is awesome, but it can also be very confusing when you don't have a teacher there to tell you like, what's up? Then after that, the book shows another two grammar points that are taught the same way as the first two. And then you have another listening exercise and another speaking exercise. And then you'll have a reading, writing, short like vocab expression, kind of like themed vocab list exercise. I don't know how to best explain it, but it's really cool. Let's go with that. And then you'll also have a cultural note that's in Korean. In other words, there's a lot of content packed into one chapter. So that's why there's two halves. So this is the 3-1 textbook or the first half of the level. And then this is the 3-2 textbook, AKA the second half of the level. So yes, you will need to get both. I know. Now, if you saw my like self-study tips for this textbook that I released about a year ago, you might be like, Natalia, I remember you threw your textbook and you said not to use it. There was a misunderstanding there. I was saying don't use the textbooks to learn the grammar because as I said, the explanations are really 
really short. They don't tell you like, can't be used like this. It can't be used like this and things like that. Instead, it's better to use the study guide to learn the grammar. This is what the study guide looks like. As you can see, I have so many sticky notes in it. I don't know if you can see from this far away, but I have a lot of sticky notes in here because this was like my holy grail. Honestly, if the textbook series didn't have these study guides, I would probably be giving these textbooks a bad review or maybe a neutral review. I don't know, I can't imagine. These study guides are amazing. So they come in English, Japanese and Chinese. So when you're ordering a study guide, make sure that you're paying attention to what language it's in because you don't want to order it and then it shows up in Chinese and you're like, I don't speak no Chinese. Or maybe you do. In that case, you're good, you're Gucci. But if you don't, you're not good. So these study guides explain the grammar in a very, very extensive way, I guess. I guess another way that I could explain how good these explanations are is that there were only a few times, like a handful of times that I ever thought, I still don't get it. Let me go find like a blog post. Let me go look at another textbook to see what their explanation says. Let me go look online and watch a YouTube video or something like that. Like I rarely had to do that. I don't know. I thought it was honestly some of the best grammar explanations I've ever seen in a textbook. I mean, I haven't used like a ton of different university textbooks, but like it's better than the Seoul National explanations, honestly. So in the textbooks, they have the vocabulary in like little boxes on the side, but they're not defined. You are expected to look them up yourself, which makes sense. These textbooks are in full Korean. And if you're in language school, you could be from anywhere in the world. You don't necessarily speak English. So it makes sense that they're not defined for you in here, but if you get the study guide, they're defined in here. So you don't have to like look every single one up. But I do want to mention there were times where the definition either didn't make much sense or it was too vague. So I ended up having to look them up on Naver anyway, so that when I was making my vocab list on Memrise, or I guess just trying to learn the words in general, I had a better understanding of what the word meant. Now onto the structure of the workbook. So these aren't like crazy different from any other textbook series. They're really easy to use. The Evol workbooks start off by having you practice your understanding of the vocabulary that you were supposed to learn. They're not super extensive like exercises or anything compared to the amount of words you're actually supposed to learn in the chapter, but I mean, there's something. And then you'll go on to grammar exercises and reading, writing, and speaking exercises. <laughs> So overall, what are my thoughts on these books? All these, there's so, this one almost hit me in the face. There's so many of these, but I guess now that I have finished them, okay, technically I finished them like a year ago, but I just, I'm sorry, time escaped me. But um, now that I have finished these, and honestly, I was probably doing this. Oh, not probably. I was doing this before I finished them, but like, I love these textbooks and I don't think I've ever pushed a textbook so hard onto other people. I really, really like these textbooks. I feel like even though they were meant for the classroom, they're so good for like self-studiers. Well, yes, you can't exactly do all the speaking exercises, that's a given, but everything else like you can do as a self-studier, especially with the help of these study guides. And if you get all six books, you get so much practice on everything like literally everything and if you watch my channel you know i already bought like the level four books because i like them that much now i know these textbooks can be expensive depending on where you live and how many people are learning korean in your country and stuff like that and i will have links in the description box of this video with like several different stores that are selling them so hopefully you can find some affordable ones for you now another thing that i wanted to talk about with these textbooks is they're a good mix of like everyday korean and academic korean Korean. So as you guys know, I want to go to grad school in Korea where like the classes are in Korean. So for me, I love that these are a mix of like both sides of that Korean language because everyday Korean is not the same as academic Korean. I can tell you that right now. So I like that I can study both at the same time. I feel like I'm working towards both goals, both like everyday life in Korea, which you would need as a grad student, right? Or I will need as a grad student, but like that st side of Korean. And then also the academic stuff that I would need for class and reading articles and debate and stuff like that. So I love that about this series. Now there are a few like tanzam or negative points that I want to share with you. So the negative points that I want to talk about mainly are about the workbooks. So these workbooks, some of the exercises are very clearly meant to mimic the questions on the topic exam. So if you don't know what the topic is, it's basically like the official exam 
um, for testing your Korean ability. It's the test that can help you get a visa. It's the test that can help you get a job. It's the test that like you need a specific score on to graduate from a Korean university, you know, as a foreign person. But some of the questions in here or some of the exercises rather do mimic those questions, which if you're preparing for the topic like I was, that's great. But if you're not taking the topic or you're not interested in the topic, they're not like, maybe the best way that you could be practicing the Korean. Um, so it really depends on like what your goal is, where your motivations are for studying Korean. The second like tanzom that I wanna share is like the writing exercise. Okay, <laughs> this is like my biggest issue with this textbook actually. The writing exercises in the workbook are so confusing. Like it's just a random block of nothing. Like it's like an essay and then there's just nothing. It's like they're missing a paragraph and then it has more like already stuff printed in the writing and then boom, another like blank paragraph and you're meant to fill it in. I think I only tried one or two of the writing exercises in the workbooks before being like, I'm done, this makes no sense to me. Maybe that's just a me problem. Maybe you're more intelligent than me and it'll be really easy. So those are my thoughts. If you're interested in learning about other intermediate textbooks and what my thoughts are on them, you can check out this short playlist for you down here. And when I say short, I really do mean short. I'm sorry, I need to do more reviews on intermediate textbooks. I know. If you have one that you would like to request, please leave it for me in the comment section and I'll look into it, potentially. I don't know, we'll see, money. <laughs> but I'll see you guys in the next video. So, bye bye you guys, bye.